With that context in mind, the next logical question for us to ask is, okay, so now that we all sort of agree that model understanding is important, how do we go about achieving that, right? So I'm going to start with two very broad, high-level intuitive approaches to achieving model understanding, and then I'll go into more and more details uh, and more recent research, right? So one of the sort of earliest approaches of thinking about how to achieve model understanding is to build models that are inherently interpretable. And what do I mean by that is models that are simple enough that we can all probably pin, print on a sheet of paper and look at them and see what the model is doing, right? So for example, models like linear regression, logistic regression, shallow decision trees, rule-based models with fewer rules and so on. So, and in the past, there has been a lot of work. Uh, uh, so I think there was a ton of work in like 80s around this topic. Again, there has been a, a revamped or renewed interest in like, you know, between the 2015s around that time. So basically, there is a bunch of work which tries to build models that we can all look at, print on a piece of paper, look at them and see what the model is doing, right? So, and these models are considered inherently interpretable. Of course, I think there are also some caveats to that because if there is a regression model that is, you know, having coefficients or looking at about 1000 features, it's very reasonable to argue whether that could even be considered interpretable because it's hard for a human to process thousand features and you know think about how they are all sort of relating to each other and what their importance is but assuming that there are a handful of features or there are a handful of constructs such as rules in a tree or number of rules uh you know assuming that then under that condition, these classes of models are often considered interpretable because end users can look at what are the important features, you know, how are the features being used and the conditions and so on easily, right? So the second uh, a category of approaches that has become a lot more popular in the recent past is to explain previously built models in a post hoc fashion. And what do I mean by that is, for example, we could have a very complex model like a deep neural net with several hundreds or thousands of intermediate layers or a model that's a black box. That means we don't have any access to the internals of the model. We can just throw a data point at it and get an output from it. If we want to understand these kinds of models, the approach or the way to do it is we have this sort of an explainer algorithm which takes as input this kind of a black box or a complex model and breaks it down into several simpler models that you know are considered interpretable, right? So that's the approach that has become popular uh, since about 2015, 2016, right? Uh, oftentimes, whenever we come to that point and we discuss these two approaches, the question that comes up, in fact, in this area of trustworthy machine learning and explainability, this is almost considered a religious question as to which side you subscribe to, whether you want to build inherently interpretable models or post hoc explanations. Uh, but thankfully, we don't have to resort to answering it uh, you know, in a religious way, because there are more logical arguments to picking one over the other, right? The reason even post hoc explanations became popular in the past decade or so is because of what is being shown in this picture, right? So this picture is just a pictorial representation of insights from different research papers, but increasingly what we have been fi finding in machine learning research is that while models such as neural networks are very accurate, they are not very interpretable. And while models such as linear regression or shallow decision trees are very interpretable, they're not quite accurate, right? So there seems to be this kind of trade-off between interpretability and accuracy because of which post hoc explanations have become popular so that people can build a complex model that is accurate without worrying about its interpretability and then use post hoc methods to understand that complex model, okay? 
Uh, so that's one reason why one would resort to using post hoc explanations. It's when there are trade offs in your setting between interpretability and accuracy, right? The other reason why we might want to use post hoc explanations is we just don't even have access to a model, but we still want to understand, you know, what features the model is focusing on when making predictions, right? In that case, obviously, we need to resort to using some post hoc probing methods. And, you know, that's another scenario where they might be useful. If you are not running into one of these two scenarios, then you might probably want to consider building a model that is inherently interpretable, right? So because you are not running into trade-offs between interpretability and accuracy, and your model is not a black box, you're not dealing with such a model. In such cases, you might at least consider or try building an inherently interpretable model. 